Hello and welcome to today's flight. Today is January 23rd, 2023, and uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I've got a new GoPro Hero 11, and I've got that mounted on me as a POV camera, and that will allow you to show my interactions with the different devices that I have in my simulator cockpit at home and uh, the way I train for real-world flight. So I find the, uh, the simulator, X-Plane 11 in particular, extraordinarily useful in maintaining proficiency uh, in instrument flying. So I use it quite regularly. I have quite a number of hours logged in. Uh, not, not only does it save on fuel, but it allows you to uh, interact with ATC via Pilot Edge and uh, maintain uh, your communication skills and your flying skills. Um, I always fly X-Plane 11 without autopilot because I don't have autopilot in that airplane right there. So uh, I basically train the way that I fly. All right, so we're gonna start from a cold and dark. Now, Nothing is on other than the computer, as you can see. And uh, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fire up for flight right there. No flight plan has been entered. And then I also use a Garmin Era 660. So we're going to go ahead and fire that up. And while that's booting, I'll just talk a little bit about how that's interfaced with the computer. Uh, there's some, uh, some smart guys out there that have a YouTube a video and, uh, and some other information available online that shows you how to interface this with your PC. But the bottom line is it's got a data cable that Garmin provides that allows it to interface in the cockpit with other Garmin devices. You use the same data cable and uh, connect that to your PC. I also have a 12 volt power supply uh, connected to it, so it's always receiving power. Uh, pretty cool stuff, and when you fire up X-Plane, you sync it with your Garmin device, and it, it places your airplane exactly where it is in X-Plane 11, and uh, as you fly, the Garmin behaves as if it's an actual flight. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get these two devices to talk to each other. So once now that that's booted up, uh, I'm gonna go to Tools, Setup, and then Bluetooth, and I've got several different device options. One is this iPad right here, that's the one on top, my iPhone, and then there's a, a, a second iPad that I can also connect to it. You can only connect to one device at a time. I'm connecting now to my iPad, that's now connected. A couple of ways to confirm that. We can go over here to uh, Devices, and there you see Garmin Connect is connected. And in other ways, we can go to our map, and when we're in our flight plan, uh, flight plan edit page, you can see this little icon right here, which is an airplane with some radiating radio waves. That also indicates that it is connected to the Garmin device. And I can share flight plans from the Garmin device to the iPad and vice versa. Uh, we'll show that here in a second. Okay, so now that we got those guys talking to each other, the next thing I'm gonna do, and I noticed that there is a sequence to these things, and if the sequence isn't followed in my case, I think every Everyone has their different nuances with their setups. If I don't follow this sequence, this Garmin will not behave properly when interacting with X-Plane 11. It'll see X-Plane 11, but there are some quirks that will pop up. And I found a way to eliminate that through a lot of trial and error. And the way I do that, and this is the way it has to connect with X-Plane in every case, but the best way to do this in my case is you bring up this GPS page, you click on menu, and you activate the simulator. Now the simulator is active uh, in my Garmin uh, Era 660. Now I'm gonna bring up X-Plane. And as soon as it detects X-Plane, it's gonna go ahead and place our airplane in the Era 660 exactly where it is in X-Plane. And everything there forward is gonna behave as if it's an actual flight. All right, and uh, don't ask me how long it took me to figure that out, but uh, it's done. So, okay, now we're going to go ahead and activate our track IR. So this is a track IR receiver mounted on top of my monitor. I've got a track IR transmitter mounted on my aviation headset. This uh, headset came out of the airplane. Um, I use it because again, I try to make my training in the simulator at home as realistic as possible. Also, it produces a pretty cool sound. Sounds just like an aviation headset in an airplane. Um, it's interfaced with the computer via this intercom box. This is something I removed from my airplane and replaced. This is a two place. I replaced it with a four place. So I figured why not use this in my cockpit? And that's what I'm doing now. I can hear myself through the headset as if I'm flying in an actual airplane. So, all right, so far so good. Let's go ahead and wake up the track IR. I will also say there's a sequence to this. You must turn on your track IR fresh before you bring up X-Plane or X-Plane won't see it. This little icon down here, I'm gonna click. There should be a light come on on the left side there in green. Uh, that indicates that our track IR is active. Okay, next step is gonna be we're gonna bring up X-Plane and we're gonna pick a location to start our flight. We're gonna be starting our flight from Olympia Regional Airport uh, 
It is one of the airports in the Northwest that's supported, fully supported by Pilot Edge from the ground up, so to speak. Uh, so they're gonna have ground controllers, tower, and then uh, they'll hand you off to Seattle Departure, Seattle Center, and that kind of thing, depending on your flight. Today's flight, I'm going to take us from Olympia Regional over to Toledo Airport, which is a non-towered airport. Okay, so let's go ahead and select New Flight in X-Plane. Here we have Olympia Regional. I typically start here at Transient Parking. I'm gonna confirm that, and let's go ahead and start a flight. All right, so the Garmin uh, 660 doesn't yet know where to place the airplane and for whatever reason when you have it in simulator mode and it's not yet connected with the x-plane uh, it puts it here off the coast of Africa don't ask me why but that's where it is right now a couple of other things we're going to do um, and I'll show you here in a second we're going to project the iPad screen to the PC monitor everything that I do when I fly is in 4k you can see this is a curved widescreen and then I have another 4K monitor to the right, and that's typically where we put charts and other information relevant to the flight that I'm flying. And while that's booting, I will mention that um, I do have my iPad in the airplane. It's mounted right here in the center of the control wheel. Um, I wasn't able to do that with this control wheel, but uh, anyway, it, it's as close as I could get it, and I can still interact with it. And the, the Garmin Air 660 is pretty close in terms of where it's located in the in the simulator cockpit, as it is in the the actual airplane. I kind of have it down here uh, to my right, so everything is pretty similar. This is a SciTech instrument that I use, and this is my VOR number two because the airplane that I fly in X Plane 11, which is the same airplane that I own, is uh, doesn't. It doesn't, for some reason, have a second VOR, whereas my airplane does. So I was able to achieve the second VOR here uh, via the SciTech instrument, and I find that quite useful. And while that's booting, X-Plane, uh, when it reaches a certain point in its boot sequence, the Gorman Aero 660 will recognize it, and it'll place this little airplane here, exactly where it is in X-Plane 11, which should be at transient parking at Olympia Regional Airport. So there it is, it just saw it. There's the airport right there. And that's the position of the airplane at transient parking. And here's X-Plane 11, and that's got us in the same location. And also, so now if I go to devices here, it sees both Garmin Connects and X-Plane 11. And if you go to the map, that's our airplane right there at Olympia Regional, at Olympia Regional Airport. Okay, so let's go ahead, now that we've got all that stuff booted up, let's go ahead and project our iPad screen uh, onto the onto the PC, PC screen. So I'm going to bring up a program called 5K Player. All right, now that that's up, I'm going to swipe down on the right side of my iPad. I'm going to click on this, and then it says Screen Mirroring, and then I'm going to select the 5K Player. All right, so there's our, there's our iPad projected onto the PC screen. I can move this around, and I usually put it down here on the right side so it doesn't interfere with my ability to see the instruments. So everything that you see here on my iPad will be projected over there. So let's go ahead and build a flight plan. So we said we're going to go from KOLM, which is Olympia Regional Airport, uh, to Toledo Airport, which is KTDO. And that's, uh, that's up there. So now... We are going to select um, actual routes here that have been that have been filed and accepted by ATC in, in real world flights. There's a bunch of them. Um, we're going to make it really simple. We're going to do this from the Winlow intersection, and it, and, and go ahead and select that. Here's the flight that's that's going from from uh, Olympia Regional to Winlow, and then we come in and uh, let's pick a something simple would do. And I actually flew this in real world, so I'm going to merge some of that video in with this, um, where we did an actual RFR flight. So we're going to be landing on runway 6 at Toledo. Uh, let's go ahead and switch the view to IFR low. Now we're going to go back here and look at procedures. We're going to pick an approach, runway 6. Uh, whoops. Let's. We're going to pick the RNAV runway 6, and we're going to choose from wind low. And we're going to do an LNAV. So our minimums are going to be 800 feet. So we're going to add that to the route. All right, so as you can see, we're going to be coming in and doing a course reversal. So we're going to cross uh, HEMZO. And then we're going to 
uh, turn 30 degrees and then time that for one minute. We'll make a standard rate turn to the right and uh, intercept. This is basically a, a hold in lieu of a procedure turn. So that's how we're going to reverse and then come in on a 056. And we're going to go ahead to uh, plates here. It's going to close our last plate. Now we're going to bring up Toledo and the uh, RNAV 6. So that gives us a view. So once we uh, cross Hemzo, probably they'll clear us for at or above 4,700. We're going to cross Hemzo. That's in the course reversal uh, here. Once we cross Hemzo, we're going to descend at or above 3,900 by Anam, at or above 3,100 by Asoxy, uh, and then by 5D, 1360. And we're going to go into our minimums, uh, which is an LNAV. I, I'm not going to have vertical guidance on this flight, so we're going to have to fly the LNAV minimum descent altitude of 800 feet, and we would have to have at least one mile visibility to do that. And that's going to uh, give us about 500 feet of clearance above the threshold uh, or at the missed approach point. And so that's what we are going to fly. Let's close that. Let's go ahead and bring up the OLM airport diagram. That's going to be here. And we'll go ahead and send that over to the map for now. And uh, that's, that shows our current location on the airport right there, which, uh, which corresponds with where you see us here on the Aero 660. Okay, so far so good. Uh, a couple more things we're gonna do uh, to, uh, to uh, build our flight plan. So that, that's our flight plan. So now I'm gonna click on that same icon I talked about a little bit earlier, and we're gonna send it to the panel. All right, so that's gonna, that's gonna come up here on our active flight plan in the Aero 660. KOLM to Winlow. Uh, to KTDO. Pretty simple stuff. We can always add waypoints and other things, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. And it also recognized that we have an instrument flight plan here, uh, here in ForeFlight, and it reflects that here. It basically has the instrument approach in the Air 660 on standby. Uh, final, it, and the Air 660 only goes from the final approach fix to the missed approach point. Uh, so FA to MA, you can see right there, those are not active right now. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Okay, so far so good. Let's go ahead now and connect with Pilot Edge, and we're also going to build a flight plan. So let's go ahead and open. Okay, so now that we're on Pilot Edge, let's go ahead and file a flight plan. So we're going to be uh, IFR, tail number 7428 Romeo, P28A is the airplane, uh, Golf is the equipment, 115 is the uh, airspeed and KLM is the point of departure. And the arriving location is KTDO, KTDO. And we're going to be 5,000. No alternate. We're going to ask for the Yelm. Yelm 5 departure. Wind low. And that should do it. So we have IFR, 7.28 Romeo, Papa 28 Alpha, Golf is the equipment, 115 true airspeed, KOLM, KTDO, 5000, Yelm 5 departure, wind low, and that's filed. Now we have confirmation. Let's go ahead and connect to Pilot Edge. There's all my information there, which matches the airplane that we're in now. Connected to Pilot Edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the airplane started. I'm going to add some fuel. Uh, so we're going to go here to weight and balance. I'm going to start out with four hours worth of fuel. That's done. Apply changes. Okay, so I always get rid of the uh, control wheels. Uh, they they get in the way. I mean, they're kind of it's cool to have them there and stuff, but they really are kind of a nuisance when you're trying to do an IFR training flight. All right, everything's looking good. We're going to get the airplane started, so we're going to go mixture full rich, uh, throttle in one quarter. All switches are off, and we're going to prime it, get a little bit of fuel in the carburetor. Manage to switch on. We're going to turn on a rotating beacon fuel pump just to verify pressure. That's looking good, and off. Okay, good start. Master switch on. And now we're going to set up our frequency. So, here at Olympia Regional, we have uh, ground 121.6. Put that in right now. 
and towers 124.4. So that's in standby. Okay, that's a good. And uh, let's go ahead and set our gyro. Yelm 5 departure, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to bring that, bring up uh, iPad here so you can see me interacting with it. But So we're going to close that for now. Let's go ahead and bring up the KOLM. Yelm 5 departure. And uh, let's find out what runway they're departing from here today. So we're going to look at our frequency for ATIS. There's KOLM and ATIS is 135.725. And that's right there and unfortunately Toledo does not have weather so let's go ahead and listen to ATIS here you'll notice the uh, iPad projection disappears anytime I interact with the departing runway 17 visual approaches in you read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions advise on initial contact that you have information Alpha all right Alpha's current current time. Olympia Airport ATIS information Alpha 1854 Zulu, wind calm, visibility 10, 300 scattered, temperature 4, dew point 3, altimeter 3047, arriving and departing runway 17, visual approaches in use, read a call runway assignments and hold short instructions, advise... Okay, Alpha's current for now. We'll listen to it one more time before we call ATC to make sure it doesn't change. Now I'm putting my uh, acronym CRAFT. Um, I'm anticipating we're going to be cleared to our destination airport. So Toledo Airport, Route uh, Yum 5, probably they'll give us that, not necessarily. Wind low, most likely radar vectors, I don't know that yet, and then probably direct uh, altitude. It's probably, since the Yum 5, I'm going to go ahead and take a, a look at this. Uh, let me bring it back up on the screen. Since the Yelm 5 calls for a left turn heading 064 to 3000, then radar vectors on course and filed altitude, so probably they'll give us 3000 and then 5000 after 10 minutes. Frequency uh, Seattle departure on pilot edge from this airport is 120.4. We won't know our squawk code. Okay, so. That should be all set. Now I'm going to go through our uh, checklist for taxi. Uh, clearing all the previous stuff. So we have flight plan filed. No chocks are being used. Radios and avionics. We're going to go ahead and set up all of our frequencies. All right, so we already have uh, ground and tower in for Olympia Regional Airport. Now we're just going to go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to bring up our full flight path, and then we're going to bring up Toledo Airport, which is Ed Carlson Field. And uh, CTEF over there is 122.9. So I'm going to write that down here. CTEF 122.9 at KTDO. Uh, and we'll flip over to that here in a minute. For some reason, COM2 doesn't work in X-Plane 11, this airplane, it has to be COM1, so we'll, we'll set that up at the appropriate time. Again, there's no weather uh, over there at, at Carlson Field. Uh, just in case they give us the Olympia VOR, I'm gonna go ahead and insert. Sometimes they'll uh, have you fly from the Olympia VOR, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert that, uh, just in case. Okay, so far so good, let's finish our checklist. Uh, transponder, we're going to turn that on. And for now, we'll squawk VFR and squawk altitude. Won't be using autopilot today. Got to bring it back up for flight here. So, uh, headset, uh, I don't have a... Uh, uh, automatic noise reduction this headset it's not necessary devices are connected we'll check one more time to make sure those are good there they are x-plane and the gorman route is set for flight traffic it's going to be real world traffic so you probably can see airplanes on there that aren't really a factor in this flight light test required so i'm going to turn my nav light landing light and strobe light on 
ATIS. So I'm going to listen to one more time just to make sure it didn't flip over uh, from Alpha to Bravo. Directional gyro, we did set that. Taxi area is clear. Mixture, we're going to do a slight lean for ground operations and check the throttle brake steering on the move. And now we're going to go ahead and ask for our clearance. Olympia Ground Charkey 7428 Romeo IFR to Tango Delta Oscar Airport, ready to copy. Taxi to parking via Charlie, monitor ground, you too, two for zero Delta. There's 7428 Romeo Olympia ground cleared to Tango Delta, correction, uh, Kilo Tango Delta Oscar Airport. Young 5 departure, Olympia, VOR, direct wind low, direct, maintain 3000, expect 5000, 100 minutes after departure. Pressure frequency 120.4, squawk 4326. Okay, 7428 Romeo is cleared to Tango Delta Oscar Airport via the Yelm 5 departure, Olympia, direct wind low, direct, 3000, 5010, 120.4, 4326. Correct, right, Romeo, read back, correct, expect runway 17. 28 Romeo. Okay, so the, like I said, they sometimes, uh, she uh, throws in the Olympia VOR, which is totally fine, we have that in there. And uh, now we're going to do a run up here um, on the ramp. So uh, tow brakes are set, recording equipment, seats and seat belts trims, checking set neutral, confirmed. And we're going to go ahead and latch the door up top. Flight controls are free and correct. Directional gyro is set. We're going to recheck that. And I have 064 set for the the Elm 5 departure and artificial horizon is set, altimeter not set, uh, we want 3047. And 3047 set, fuel quantity sufficient and balanced, again I got to keep remember to bring the iPad up, uh, primers in and lock, mixture full rich, and 1800 on the RPMs. Check it right, Magneto. Good drop, about 100, and back to both. Left Magneto, same drop scene. Check it, Carpe, we should see a slight drop. And there it is, oil pressure fuel. Pressure and oil temperature are in the green gyro section gauges. In the green, then checking idle. That's looking good at about 650 RPMs and back to 1,000. We're gonna bring up our checklist here, go uh, check off all the items. So we have throttle, magnetos, car heat, engine instruments, vacuum, ammeter. We're going to check that with load. We're going to turn off the landing light, look for a slight drop in the charge. And there it is. That's looking good. Throttle's back to a thousand. Fuel pumps on for takeoff. Verifying pressure. That's looking good. Radios and avionics. We're set to ground. Tower on standby. Transponder squawk in altitude. And we're going to put the squawk code 4326. Four, three, two, six, and that's confirmed. Devices we confirmed, those are connected for flight route. We're gonna go ahead and center the airplane and orient it toward directional flight. Lights are set. Flaps are set for takeoff. Cabin door is latched tops and bottoms. Window secure, fuse selector timer, and time is noted. And we are set fullest tank. I'm going to listen to ATIS one more time just to make sure it didn't flip over to Bravo. Arriving and departing runway 17. Visual approaches in use. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact that you have information alpha. All right, still alpha. And uh, I'm going to bring a port plate here just to show you how cool uh, it is when you're, it, 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 I'm familiar with this airport, but if you weren't, um, you just send this 
airport diagram to to your map. And uh, most likely they'll give us the Echo Bravo to 17. So, but anyway, just wanted you to be able to see how useful that tool is. Olympia Ground Cherokee 7428 Romeo at transient parking, taxi Alpha. 7428 Romeo, runway 17, taxi via Echo Bravo. Runway 17 via Echo Bravo, 28 Romeo. Looks like they switched controllers on us. Yeah, the computer does struggle a little bit when I have the uh, screen projection on. It, it seems to take up a lot of processing power. You're going to see a little bit of screen stutter, but it shouldn't stumble to the point where anything locks up. But just be, keep in mind that that's what's going on right now. Approaching runway 17. Olympia Tower, Cherokee 742 at Romeo, holding short runway 17, ready for departure. Runway 742 at Romeo, Olympia Tower, runway 17, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 172 at Romeo. Approaching runway 17. Entered runway 17. 5,400 uh, feet remaining. Based on the ATIS that we saw, let me go ahead and bring four flight up. Based on the uh, ATIS that we heard, uh, we might be into IMC here shortly after takeoff, and that's a good thing for training purposes. All right, now I'm going to bring up the. Uh, Toledo approach we're going to be using now. I have that superimposed over the map. All right, full power. Engine instruments in the green. Power available for takeoff. Airspeed indicator is alive. Pressure on the control wheel and off the ground. We're going to hold runway heading until reaching 700. Then we're going to be uh, climbing left turn 064. Number 7428, our mail contact departure. Over to departure 28 Romeo. All right, standard rate turn to the left. We're going to climb 3,000. San Francisco ground, Cirrus 512, Tango Foxtrot at GA ramp, ready to taxi with information, Quebec. Looks like we'll be in the clouds here very shortly. Number 512, Tango Foxtrot, San Francisco ground, runway 28 right, taxi via uh, Charlie Echo. All right, taxi to the 28 right via Charlie Echo, 512 Tango Fox. There's no hurry to get to departure. Uh, flying safe is more important, so now we're on our 064 heading and stable. So now we're going to go and flip over to approach and give them a call. Or departure. South departure, Cherokee 742 at Romeo, out of 2,000, climbing 3,000. November 7428, Romeo, Seattle departure, radar contact, climb and maintain 5,000, clear direct wind low. Climb maintain 5,000, clear direct wind low, 28 Romeo. All right, so now I'm going to activate my approach. And I want you to see four flight here. 
So now that's the direct course line to Winlow. So we're going to make a standard rate turn to the left, to the right, and we're uh, climbing 5,000. So uh, San Francisco ground, Sears 512 Tingle Fox Show. Just confirming, you said taxi to 28 right via Charlie Echo. Number two Tango Fox Show, that's correct. Do you want the uh you want a different runway, or I was going to give you 2-8 right at, Echo, at uh, the Echo intersection? Uh, negative 2-8 right works for us, just making sure. Uh, we'll go Charlie Echo, and then hold short of 1-9 right, 1-9 left, and then uh, Lima back to yeah, Charlie, if, uh, if that's what you're after. Five months, you take a clock. I know that is not what I'm after. It's the Echo intersection, just the west of 1-9 right. So Charlie Echo to runway 2-8 right. Okay, Roger. Uh, echo intersection via Charlie to 2-8 right, 5 months, Tango Fox. So that air traffic that you see there on the iPad is, is real world traffic, so I, I left that on. If it becomes too much of a distraction, I'll go ahead and turn it off. Coming up on 4,000, 1,000 feet to go. activated that leg that we're on right now, 3,500, 500 to go. So if we look at our Garmin device here, it's uh, got our distance and time to wind low, showing 22 minutes and about 25 seconds. And uh, that corresponds right here with what we're seeing on our iPad of 22 minutes. Minute trim shrimp aileron left, airplane is acting like it wants to go right. A lot of that's based on fuel load, cargo, and all kinds of different th factors. November 743, Romeo contact, Seattle Center 126.6. Open at 26628, Romeo. Seattle Center, Cherokee 7428, Romeo, level 5000. 7428, Romeo, Seattle Center, other. I just want to show you the 3D vision on the Gorman device right there. That's showing us our ground speed in knots, altitude, GPS altitude, uh, rate of turn, and that's basically our uh, omni-bearing selector showing us our current course line, desired track, heading, uh, current course, lots of different information, vertical speed indicator, very, very cool. Uh, device to have in the airplane and very, very useful as a backup and supplemental information being provided by other instruments in the airplane. So there you can see a real world airplane uh, at 20,000 above our present altitude. Alright, so 14 minutes, 25 nautical miles to Winlow intersection here. They're going to be asking us uh, our approach preference. That's going to be our nav runway 6 from Winlow. Just to review what that looks like, we're going to be doing a course reversal there at Winlow. And that's going to look like this. So here you can also see, and this is really cool, on the Aero 660, you can see the terrain below, very similar to our AHARS view uh, right here on the, on the iPad being provided by ForeFlight. So again, very, very useful supplemental information. This also, the Garmin device also gives terrain warnings if you're within a thousand feet of any terrain, it's going to show in yellow if you're within a hundred feet, uh, that's going to Number 742, Romeo, I advise you have the weather and NOTAMs at your destination and approach request. 28 Romeo has weather and NOTAMs, and uh, we would like the RNAV 6 from Winlow, please. November 7428, Romeo, cross Winlow at 5000, cleared RNAV runway 6 approach. Cross Winlow 5000, cleared RNAV runway 6, 28 Romeo. Uh, 
I'm going to go back to our map view here, center our airplane. All right, so 12 minutes to wind low. We're going to cross that at 5,000. So here on the Aero 660, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you map view uh, right there. And again, that what it sees right now in terms of a flight plan is direct wind load at uh, Toledo Airport. Uh, you can clean up the map. You can remove uh, detail to, to simplify the map, declutter it. Um, so there again, a really good overview of terrain. Very helpful when you're flying over mountainous terrain. Regardless what view you're in, if you um, are approaching terrain or terrains within its what it sees here on the uh, moving map. If it's within a thousand feet, it's going to bring a little box up here in the left and give you a terrain warning. So that's also a pretty cool feature. So I absolutely love the, the uh, Aero 660. I love having it in a simulator, talking to my iPad, and I love the fact that it that it's interacting with X Plane 11 as if we're in the real thing. So. All very, very good stuff. So there you see the Ed Carlson Field, uh, AKA Toledo Airport approach plate. Geo referenced over Number our- Number 5 Tango Foxtrot, San Francisco Tower. Make a right turn on course, runway 28 right uh, at Echo, quick for takeoff. And a lot of times when, um, when I'm flying the sim, if it's visual conditions like this, I'll go ahead and change views here to the IFR view. But, but for today, for the purpose of making this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it like that, uh, so that it merges nicely with our real-world footage that we took of an actual instrument flight that we did into Toledo Airport back in June. Now on Pilot Edge, while we're flying along here, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the uh, Pilot Center. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the live map to show all the air traffic that's logged into Pilot Edge right now. And more specifically, I'm going to go ahead and bring up our airplane. Which is right there. Just coming over Chehalis right now. Sky has 620, Seattle Center, clear to the McMinnville Airport, has filed, maintain 8,000. Uh, departure frequency 121.4, squawk 1531, hold for release. All right, so let's take a look at our plate. So our uh, final approach course is going to be 056 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and set that. Uh, 620, read back, correct. Device number one for departure frequency change should rise to approve. Bearing selector, and that will serve kind of as a reminder. To us. The number 512 Tango Fox Shark, contact departure. Eight minutes, 57 seconds to wind low. Just to review what we're going to be doing there. We're going to be making a right turn out direct to Hemzo, which is part of the approach procedure. And uh, that is going to be Number 512 Tango Foxtrot, NorCal departure radar contact, resume appropriate VFR altitude. Return to 195 degrees as depicted there. It says at least 4,700 feet. We're going to be at 5,000. And once we make that right turn out, as soon as we cross Hemzo, we're going to, at that point, we can uh, we can descend after Hemzo, or after Winlow to uh, 4,700 and maintain 4,700 throughout the procedure. until we cross Hemzo again, then down to 3,900, 3,100, stepping down to 1,360, and finally 800 feet. And again, that's for the LNAV without uh, vertical guidance. Okay, so that's looking great. Everything's looking good. And there, you can see to the right, that's our airplane right there, just coming over Chehalis right now. There is some mountainous terrain that's part of this procedure brings you out over some of the mountainous terrain there in the uh, in the foothills. 
and that's why the 4,700 feet before you start stepping down. Going to switch fuel tanks here. Right tank. So I, I, hopefully you, you've gained an appreciation for the uh, the benefit of using all the same stuff that you use in the airplane, or even if you don't fly a real-world airplane, it, it's it's as realistic as it gets. If you set up you know a cockpit like this with this kind of equipment, and I absolutely love uh, for flight and the iPad Mini. And I think it's really cool that I'm able to have the same airplane that I fly in the real world as part of the X-Plane experience. What beautiful country it is around here. Never get tired of it. So we have six minutes, uh, we're doing about 118 over ground. We have about six minutes to uh, Winlow intersection. Now, since he's cleared us for the approach, we are basically gonna fly the entire approach procedure from Winlow. Uh, which, like I said before, we can descend to 4,700 from Winlow down to Hemzo, maintain 4,700 in the course reversal, and do our step downs. Uh, because once they clear you for the approach, you can do everything they, that the approach procedure prescribes. And then at some point, he'll hand us over to uh, the advisory frequency, which uh, I have written down here, 122.9. Under normal circumstances in the training, I would uh, do the missed approach. I'm not going to do that in the interest of time, but let's take a look at what it calls for. Um, so we would climb to 5,000 feet direct to the Kokum intersection or waypoint, left turn uh, 319 degrees to Tano, and hold there. Continue to climb in the hold to 5,000 if you're not already there by that time. And so what I would do normally is um, here, on the flight plan, I would go ahead and, and add those waypoints in for reference purposes in the event that I need to do the missed approach. Uh, I suppose I could put them in anyways, right? Uh, C-O-K-A-M and Tano. So let's go ahead and add that. C-O-K-A-M and T-O-N-N-O T-O-N-N-O and enter that just see what that looks like. So that's that's the missed approach right there. That's what that that's what that looks like. And uh, then we would do the hold. So I can um, hold my hand on that on that waypoint there. Switch over to waypoints and Tano go to more uh, details. And then I can put the hold in there. So the hold is uh, inbound three 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 degrees. Three 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 inbound and add that to the route. And there's our whole pretty cool stuff sending the airplane back where we are. So now if we have to do a missed approach, again, we're not gonna do it today, but if we had to, um, it's already in there. There's uh, there's no thinking required, at least insofar as having to go back and read the missed approach procedure. You already have it on there. You've already briefed it to yourself. So, all right, so now we're three minutes, 24 seconds from wind low. So we're going to prepare to descend uh, just a few hundred feet, really, just to 4,700 feet as we uh, make our course reversal in the hold from EMZO. There you can see the terrain down below on the Garmin device. November 512 Tango Fox, trust now outside of the San Francisco Class Bravo Airspace. minute 55 seconds wind low 
Then right turn 195 degrees direct Hemzo. This green line, in case you're wondering that this green line, I call it the amoeba, because it's constantly moving around and changing, is your glide distance. Uh, it's called glide advisor, a feature in um, foreplay. When you program the performance profile of the airplane, uh, for this airplane, best glide speed with no engine is 85 miles per hour. And it takes that into account, looks at all the terrain down below, and it shows you your glide distance in the event you were to lose an engine. So quick reference, uh, I would make that plate go away. I would switch over to uh, the sectional view and look for air plates or a, airports or a suitable landing site within that, that circle there because that's as far as I would be able to go without an engine. Of course, I would try to go through my engine restart procedures, but if, if that fails, I'm gonna have to make it somewhere within that green circle. All right, 45 seconds wind low. Five seconds. All right, I'm going to set up my stopwatch here. Seven seconds and right turn 195. Standard rate to the right. Get it to send just ever so slightly. There's 195 rolling out. Maintain 4,700. So we're in a slight descent right now. Just reduce power a little bit. Departure Sky High 620, holding short runway 31, ready to fly. Sky High 620, release for departure. Fast foot of cutoff by 2030 Zulu. Time now 2025 and a half. Frequency change to advisory approved. Release for departure. Frequency change approved. Sky High 620. Okay, minute 31. Hands out. Again, just a very gradual descent here. And then I'll add power back when we're at 4,700. November 512 Tango Foxtrot, contact North Cal Perch 120.05. There's 4,700, we're going to level off there. Number 512, Tango Foxtrot, North Cal Approach, the Modesto Altimeter 3016. Then we're going to turn 30 degrees right. Once we cross Hemsco. And nine seconds. There it is. Once we roll out, we're going to time our outbound. Rolling out. There you can see that terrain I was talking about, some of the foothills out here. Foothills to the coastal range. And we're going to start our clock.
this airport we're flying into, I call it the Crosswind Airport. I commented to someone who has an airplane base there, and, and I said, hey, that airport seems to always have a crosswind. And he goes, yeah, he goes, you probably didn't know this, but when it was built, it was built for World War II training in crosswind landings. <laughs> they deliberately placed the airport where you would have a crosswind 90% of the time. I'm gonna do a two minute outbound here. So uh, there's one minute. seconds. Then standard rate to the right. That looks like a weather update. It shook the airplane around. And notice that in, in X-Plane, whenever it does a weather update, you can get kind of thrown around a little bit. All right, there's two minutes, standard rate to the right. Departure is high 620, leaving 2,500, climbing 8,000. Sky high 620, Seattle Center, squawk 1531, I done. Correction, sky high 620, radar update. contact uh, 10 miles south of the click attack viewer. Keeps you on your toes. Uh, sure thing. There's our profile, so we're going to be descending to 3,900 by Anum, 3,900 Anum, once we cross Hems out. Should be hearing from Seattle Center here in a minute. making our way here to Hemso. Just want to talk a little bit about the equipment. So this is a honeycomb uh, yoke, and I also have the honeycomb throttle quadrant. Um, super pleased with them. I did a review on those some time ago. It's one of my earlier videos from many months ago, and I've uh, been really, really happy with this equipment since I've installed it. Right now, we're in a GA airplane single engine, and you can see this is set up for commercial uh, multi-engine stuff. But it works fine no matter what application. In this case, I just used the, the, the throttle here and then the mixture right there. And it works great for my purposes. 45 seconds to Hemzo. Then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and activate the approach. 
in my Garmin. 30 seconds, Hepzo. Then down to 3,900 by Enum. Fifteen seconds. All right, I'm going to bring the power back to 2,000 RPMs. All right, we're set full as tank. Mixture. Surface temperature reader, may I report your IFR cancellation or missed approach in the air on this frequency or on the ground on 122.2. Frequency change to advisory approved. Okay, cancel in the air this frequency, 22.2 on the ground, over to advisory, 2 at Romeo. We're 512 Tango Foxtrot, I don't see any traffic at Modesto Airport, radar service terminated, it's about VFR, frequency change should advisory approved. Alright, 22.9 in the standby here. Looking for 3,900. Coming up on Enum. Uh, 41 seconds. There's 4,000. 30 seconds. Okay, landing light on and fuel pump. There's 3,900, we're going to level off here briefly. And then 3,100, that's another cool thing about 4Flight, you can actually see our step down altitudes right here, because we put the full approach in there. All right, now we're going to continue down to 3,100, 3,100. And there, since I activated the approach in the R660, um, we have our 3D vision view. Uh, pretty cool stuff. It's going to come left slightly here. Looks like some little puffy stuff up here we might be punching through as we make our final approach. All right, SOC C, or however you say that, is the final approach fix. And then 5D, the one after that, is uh, three nautical miles to runway six. Gonna bring the power back just a little bit more here. Like that worked out pretty good timing wise. We're just coming up on uh, 3,200 feet 20 seconds. So we're going to continue our descent at the present rate to 5D. There's 3,100. Now looking for 1,360. 1,360. seconds, 4.6 nautical miles to 5D. So two and a half minutes at 500 feet a, s a minute. That's 2,000, that's over 2,000 feet. So that should be good at our present rate of descent. That looks like another weather update. Or it could be because we're flying in the clouds. We've got a little bit of bump there.
2,500. turbulence going on there. It definitely keeps you focused when that sort of thing happens. You have everything all nice and stable, and then also you get kicked around. You're either climbing or descending and making corrections while trying to maintain your course. One minute, 19 to 5D. Increasing uh, sink rate just a little bit here. Nineteen hundred forty seconds. Eighteen hundred. Go flaps one. Sixteen hundred, fourteen seconds. There's five D just continuing descent eight hundred. Missed approach point three nautical miles. And there's the airport, 12 o'clock. Toledo traffic, Cherokee 7428, Romeo, two mile final, runway six, full stop, Toledo. Since we have the runway, we're going to go flaps two. There you can see our missed approach if we needed to. Basically climbing 5,000 left at uh, Kokum to uh, Tono intersection and hold. You'll notice that I have four flights set up to s immediately switch to airport diagram view as soon as you land. That comes in really handy at unfamiliar airports. Flaps three. Airspeed's looking good, sync rate's looking good. Now, I do use head shake, and I have it set at the default settings, and that really does add a lot of realism to your simulator experience. Makes landings and uh, takeoffs more difficult, too. All right, pull power back to idle. retract there's the uh, diagram view airport diagram view got a turn off coming up here I'm pretty sure this is where it turned off when I 
flew this very same RNAV procedure in the Cherokee. So once I get clear of the runway here, we'll go ahead and uh, do a quick debrief and uh, end the video. I know it's kind of a long one, but a lot of stuff packed into it that I think uh, hopefully uh, you'll find useful in your simulator flying experience. Toledo traffic 28 runway always clear of the runway Toledo. Okay, I'm going to set the parking brake, uh, turn the fuel pump off, and tune to 22-2. Cancel IFR. Okay, we're well, already back there. Seattle Center, Cherokee 742 at Romeo on the ground Toledo Airport. Cancel IFR, please. 7428 Romeo, IFR cancellation received, time 2044. 28 Romeo, thanks for your help today. Good. All right. Let's take a look at four flight and look at our entire flight path and center it on the screen. Okay, so there's our current position, Toledo. So if I click this little icon down here, and uh, by the way, this little REC, as long as that thing is uh, highlighted, it's recording the flight, highlighted in blue. There's our entire flight path. So there we departed Olympia Regional. Um, we were runway heading to 700, then a left turn out 064, that's the M5 departure. We were cleared direct wind low uh, intersection or waypoint. And that's when we uh, changed our course, direct wind low. Uh, ready ground, ground Cessna 3281 Romeo at FBO parking. All right, ready so to taxi. cross wind low and we began the approach procedure. So that was a right turnout on 195 to Hemzo. Number 321 Romeo, runway 34, taxi via Alpha. Yeah, I'm going to turn the radio off there. So, yeah, cross Hemzo at or above 4,700. Then we did a procedure turn outbound, basically a 30 degree course change after Hemzo, uh, maintaining 4,700. Time that for two minutes, then stand a return to the right, intercept the inbound course 056. And then we did our step downs according to the profile here. So 47 to 39 to 31, 1360, then finally 800 by the missed approach point. We programmed in our missed approach uh, waypoints, which are right here, which would have called for uh, climb uh, straight out, climb 5,000 uh, left at, I think it's Kokum, and then left turn out direct to Tunnel and hold right there. I put the hold in. I noticed something post-production when I went back and reviewed the video, and that is uh, when I created the hold during the flight, I noticed that I created the hold on the wrong side of the tunnel waypoint, so I want to make that correction now and show you how to make that happen. So I'm going to do a long press on the tunnel waypoint, and then up here where tunnel appears, I'm going to click on more, then details, then I'm going to click up here where it says edit hold. And if you notice, I have right turns selected. We're going to change that to left turns, add that to the route. And then it puts the hold on the correct side of the waypoint uh, with non-standard left turns. I wanted to point that out for anyone who wants to create holds while using Warflight. And as always, thanks for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you again on next flight.